Hello guys, you are welcome back to Labi Premium Concept. On this channel, we share educational content ranging from mathematics to accounting. Back to Labi Premium Concept. On this channel, we share educational content ranging from mathematics to accounting. All right, so welcome back once again to our live session today. So as you can see on your screen, today we're going to look at break-even analysis as a key decision as part of business problems that they solve within the organization. So break-even analysis is also part of what a math model that helps business people to solve problems so far as the business activities are so far as the business operates. So that is what we're going to look out in today's video. So do all to share the video, like that. So if it's your first time on the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel and then share the video so that once you share, others also get a benefit to join us and also learn with us in that line. And I believe you can hear me loud and clear. So let's begin the journey by looking at break-even analysis today as a topic we're going to look out in today's section. So let's start. We are looking at break even and as well as you can see on your screen we have break even we have loss we have profit so what is a break even analysis what is a break even analysis so this analysis help business people to make decisions concerning the output of what unit they want to produce most of the time what we're going to discuss throughout this discussion is going to be the level of output or production that the business can produce at the end of the day. That is what break even will help us to understand. So once we're able to understand the issue about break even, we'll be able to know how to determine the exact production level that we can produce and sell in order to not in order to break even, actually, neither making a profit or neither making what a loss. So when we talk about break even analysis, break even analysis actually is a technique that establishes what relationship between three things we are talking about what three things here these are what cost these are cost cost revenue cost revenue and what output others will say that is a technique that establishes relationship between cost right cost revenue and what profit so you see cost volume profit i mean cost volume profit so that is a technique we want to discuss right so break even analysis is a costing technique or it's a technique that help us to understand the relationship that exists between what cost right cost volume being what the output and what profit all right so that is the technique that i want to know or it can also be an interrelationship between what cost revenue and output so that is what break even actually is all about it established relationship between what cost revenue and output all right some also would define it as the interrelationship between cost revenue and output or cost volume and profit so once you have gotten that break-even analysis is all about cost revenue and output then what is the cost what is the revenue what is the output that is what we need to understand going forward so let's start nice and slowly by looking at what is a cost what is a revenue and what is what an output that is what we want to know in that line so what is the cost so when we talk about cost in simple terms cost has to do with the price we pay for the factors of what input by factors of input i mean what production factors of what production right in that line we have what the cost of what material 
okay we have the cost of what labor and then we have other expenses the cost of other expenses the cost of other expenses the cost of other expenses so we have what material labor and other expenses so these are the price that we pay for these what factors of what input right material labor and other expenses so other expenses can be the cost of what uh the capital the capital uh revenue i said capital revenue the capital resources the capital we can also be part of for the other expenses the entrepreneur so when you pay is himself wages or salary is also form part of what the other expense so this is what we call a cost we also define cost as an amount that we incurred on a product or a service so that is what we need to understand when it comes to what cost so we are talking about what material labor and other expenses the cost of these what input or the factors of what production that you know as what labor land natural resources human resource capital and other so we can categorize them based on our discussion in under these three categories that these are the material labor and other expenses okay so when it comes to cost with the understanding in break-even analysis we can actually segregate costs into what two components right and we'll get the one we get to the assumptions that help business people to use break-even analysis to make decisions we'll get there when we talk about costs we can break them into what two categories so we can refer that as total cost which consists of what our total variable costs plus total what face cost so cost can be divided into two categories total variable cost and total face cost what is a total variable cost when we talk about total variable cost it is a cost per nature is a cost that varies or changes with the level of output and we'll get to the output or the volume of what so right so let's say the organization decided to produce let's say 100 bags of what let's say cement 100 bags of what cement 100 bags of cement 100 bags of cement right let me spell it well 100 bags of cement all right and at the end of the day it cost them let's say it cost them in terms of variable cost it cost them let's say two thousand for example two thousand dollars for example okay and then for the particular period let's say this was what they planned to produce last year and this year let's say they are producing what well, let's say two thousand i said two thousand two hundred two hundred bags of cement bags of cement now let us ourselves this question when they produce 100 bags of cement they incur a variable cost of what two thousand now here lies the case they are producing what 200 bags of cement this year are you going to tell us that you're going to incur the same cost of two thousand they incur in the production of what 100 bags of cement that is a question for you or to you are they going to incur the same two thousand dollars they incurred in the production of what 100 bars of cement no that is not possible they will incur something that is greater than what two thousand two, two dollars right so when we talk about variable cost the variable cost is a cost as i said as and when output changes variable cost of what will change so we can probably think of say if they were producing 100 bags of cement and they were incurring two thousand or dollars then we can think of if they are producing what 200 bags of cement then it's possible that they may incur what four thousand what dollars as amount for the variable cost and this is how variable cost is being defined so in the context of defining variable cost variable cost is a cause that changes with the level of output or so by output we mean the production the production level or that level of activities that the organization want to uh, actually what engage on right so the variable cost will change as and when the output what changes so you realize that when we're producing what 100 we're incurring a cost of what two thousand but in this case we are producing two hundred. we are incurring a cost of what four thousand this is what we call a variable what cost a variable cost so let's take note of that so the offset is what we call the first cost or the total first cost so first cost per the name per the name is fixed 
whether you produce or you don't produce, you still would pay the same amount of what cost, or you still pay the same what expense. That makes it what fixed. Let's take, for example, electricity that we use within our homes, or let's say we use within our organization. Assume that a particular period we don't produce, are you going to tell us that you're not going to pay electricity costs? Let's say, let's take school for example. Assuming that the students are on vacation, does that mean they're going to turn off all our power off? Are you going to turn it off? No, that is not possible. You still, we still need what power to engage in other activities so far as the administration of the school is concerned. So, whether you like it or yes, a first course is a course that will not change with the level of outputs or sales. And in terms of payment, you pay the exact or the same on unless there is a change in the first course related to that particular word expense. So, that is the nature of what a first course. So, total first course is a course that is constant. And doesn't change with the level of out. So whether we produce 100 bags or we produce 200 bags or we produce 300 bags or we produce 400 bags, the same amount of first cost is going to be incurred throughout these levels of what so that we actually want, want to or we are engaging on. So that is the nature of what a first cost. It doesn't change with the level of output or so. So now once we know what a cost is, which comprises of what a total first cost plus the total variable cost that defines the cost of the analysis we want to understand. Now, once we have gotten the definition of what a cost, then we can also discuss what we call a revenue. What is also a revenue? So revenue is actually the amount of money that we generated when we put our production or when we put our volume of sales or when we put our output into a syllable word condition. By syllable condition, we mean that when we sell our output of production, any amount that we produce, or any quantity that we produce, when we put into a saleable condition, then we generate what? A revenue. So revenue is the amount that we generate from selling what or from the yeah, from the sale of what? The output that the business produces at the end of the day. This is what we call what a revenue. So by revenue, we will define revenue as R to be equal to the output. So output that we produce multiplied by what? The per unit cost of what the output, sorry, the per unit selling price multiplied by the per unit selling price, selling price of the output. So revenue is at the total output. So let me use T dot output multiplying what the per unit selling price of such output. This is how we define what a total revenue. So total revenue is the amount of money or the amount of what amount that we generate from selling our output to customers. So that becomes a revenue. So output multiplying per unit what selling price. So let's take note of that. And then we have been saying output, output, volume, output. What is this volume? What is it out? So the volume or the output is actually what we produce as an organization. So if you engage in the production of what product, like let's say biscuit, like let's say cement, as we're using in this case, any other product that we produce or a service that we engage, that becomes what the organization what output. That becomes the organization what service or the output. And that's what we put into sale to get what revenue, right? That's what we put into sale to get what a revenue. So that is the output that we are talking about here. And every organization depend on its objective, its purpose, and its goals will have a different level of output in that line, all right? So when we take, for example, MTN as a telecommunication, right? That is everywhere. They have their own output that they produce. They produce what? Sims, MTN, same cars, credit cars, and those kind of all stuff. And also production of other services to other specific group of people or customers that actually patronize their product. So that becomes what their output, right? So that is what break-even analysis is all about. So once you're able to know that the analysis is about cost, it's about revenue, and it's about output, then we can take the discussion a bit what further. So once you're able to understand what a break-even analysis is, then Break-even analysis is also actually a decision tool that is based on what certain assumptions. It works on certain assumptions or certain what premises, right? 
That is what break even is also all champion on. It work on certain assumptions or certain what premise. So let's see these assumptions that underlines what break even analysis. That underlines break even analysis. So we take the discussion further to look at what assumptions, assumptions underlying what break even analysis. So assumptions under B E A. Assumptions of break even analysis assumptions of break -even. as we take the discussion on if you have any question please drop in the comment section so that we'll take it from there and then we'll explain it better for you to understand so assumptions and that break even analysis so as we said break even analysis is a technique that establishes what the fundamental relationship between our cost revenue and output between our cost revenue and output and we are saying that break even works on certain what premise or certain what assumption and what are these assumptions saying or what are we saying about these assumptions so the first assumption that we need to understand the first assumption that we need to understand is that in break even analysis our total cost is equal to our total word revenue that is the first takeaway that is the first takeaway that you need to know that in break even analysis our total cost is equal to our total word revenue what is our total cost what is our total we said total cost is the composition of what total variable cost plus total fixed cost and i hope you remember that and we said total revenue too is also the composition of what our output so let me use x to represent our output that we produce as business, right? So the output, right? Multiplying what? The unit selling price, let's say XP. So I'll use that to represent as well the unit selling price. So that is what break even is saying, that our total cost is equal to total revenue. So at that point, it means that we neither make a profit or we neither make what? A loss, right? Because if, let's say, for example, our total cost is equal to, let's say, $200, for example, then all things being equal, our total revenue to is going to be what? $200,000. And what are we making as a profit or as a loss? It is what? Zero. And that should tell you that also in break-even analysis, our profit is equal to loss and that is also equal to what? Zero. So our profit is equal to loss and therefore it's equal to what? Zero. So that is at the point of what? Break-even. So we define break-even to be the point at which a certain level of production, the organization neither make a profit or a loss. And at that point, profit is equal to loss. And at the same time, all is equal to what? Zero. That's why I was showing this picture when we started with break even analysis. Let me zoom it a bit further. So I hope we can see. So it said break even. Yeah, break even, right? Telling you that we have a loss area and we have a profit area. And at this point, loss and profit have the same word weight right so that is the nature of what a break even analysis so let's take note of that so that is what we need to understand when it comes to what break even analysis we are saying our total cost is equal to our total what revenue and therefore profit is equal to loss and therefore everything is what amounted to what zero so let's put at the back side of our mind that in break even analysis Profit is equal to what? Profit or a loss is equal to what? Zero. Because at that point of break even, we neither make a profit or a loss. So that is the first assumption that we need to understand going forward. And I believe that is clear. All right. So once we have gotten that, the next assumption that break even analysis actually premise on is also about with respect to the nature of how these costs actually. Uh, how this cost actually influence one another or how this cost changes in terms of their change right so we are saying that under break even analysis total variable cost okay total variable cost varies total variable cost varies total variable cost varies or changes varies or what or changes but per unit total variable cost right is constant or fixed is constant or fixed that is the next assumption that we need to know 
that under break even analysis, total variable cost varies or changes, but total variable cost per unit or per unit variable cost is constant or fixed. And how do you explain this concept? Or how do you explain this word, uh, assumption? Let's say, for example, we have our level of activity as an organization. So we have what? Level of activity. Let's say we have four levels of activities. Level of activity. We have our total variable cost and we have our total variable cost per unit. That's unit what? Variable cost, unit variable cost. Now let's say in terms of our level of activity, we have first one, we have what? 100. Second one, we have, let's say, 200. Third, we have, let's say, 300. And fourth, we have, let's say, let's say 400. Let's put it at these four levels. And let's say the cost we incur in producing, let's say, 100, 100, uh, 100, let's say, 100 bars of cement, 100 bars of any, any product at all, Let's say for the total variable cost for such 100 is, let's say, 2,000. Okay, so if 100 is 2,000, all things being equal, 2,000 will also go for 4,000, right? And I believe you agree with me on that line. And let's say 3,000 will also go for 6,000. This is what we call segregation of cost, segregation of what? Output, right? Yeah. And you also have, if you're also producing 4,000, you're going to incur what? 8,000. 8, if you just join us, please do want to share the video. If you haven't liked it as well, like it so that others will also get a benefit to watch this video. So please share and then subscribe to the channel so that always you can visit us to watch more content on this channel. So we have the level of activity and we have the total variable cost in that line, right? And we are saying that one of the assumptions here is that the total variable cost varies or changes, but per unit variable cost is what is fixed. Per unit variable cost is what is fixed. So how do we actually explain this assumption? Now we have four levels of activities and the total variable cost with respect to each level of activity. Now let's find our total variable cost per what unit. Let's find our total variable cost per unit. So how do you find that you, do, you divide the total variable cost by the level of what activity in that line? So this is what we're going to do. We'll take 2,000 divided by what? 100. we take 4,000 divided by 200 until we get to the last level of activity is what? 400. So when we divide 2,000 by 100, what are we getting? We are getting what? 20. Then 4,000 by 200, we are also getting the same 20. You can confirm with your calculator. 6,000 by 3, you are getting what, 20? And then lastly, here, you are also getting what, 20. Now, what is happening here? We are saying that one of the assumptions that break even analysis here is that total variable cost varies, right? These are the costs. You can see they varies, right? They varies. But the total variable cost per unit is what is fixed. It doesn't change. And you can see clearly from here that it's 20 throughout here different figures coming in here and there. Now, what is the meaning of this? If you want to actually go further to explain this, you can even plot this, and you can clearly see that total variable cost changes, as you can see here, as the values that you can see here, keeps on changing, right? Because of the level of output or the level of activity, but the total variable cost per unit is what? is actually what? Face. So if I want to illustrate this on a graph, this is what I would do. Let's say I have my graph here. So the vertical line will represent what the total variable cost in terms of total variable cost. And then the horizontal line represents what the output or the volume or the unit of what sale. So here I have here to be what zero. So I have here to be like say 100. Here is 200. Here is 300. And here is what 400. And we also have yet, let's say we have here to be 2000. Let's say we have here, let me write it all well for you. So we have here to be 2000, here is 4000, here is 6000, and here is let's say 8000, right? So we have these figures coming in here and there, right? So 
at the level of what 100 our total variable cost is what 2000 right so we have 100 here and we have what 2000 so where they meet we have it here so we have what our level of what 100 and what and the cost to be what 2000 and 200 to we care a variable cost of what 4000 so that's going to be here and then six that is 3300 our variable cost is what 6000 okay and lastly 400 400 year our variable cost is what 8000 so we also have that also somewhere here so we can clearly see an upward what line or an upward what line this shows that at any level of output we are getting different words variable cost and you can clearly see from this line that at a different level of out we are getting what a different variable word cost but what if we have what this level of output but total per unit cost you are saying that is or is fixed when you also illustrate this on the graph for example like this here is my output here is what my total variable cost per what unit so here i have here to be zero i have here to be what 100 200 300 and let's say 400 and we also have here to be what 20 so let's say i have here to be 20 40 let's say 60. what is happening here at the level of 100 what is our total variable cost per is what 20 so it's 22 hours so we have 120 here 20 there 320 here and then 20 here then what we also want to have a, a line to actually pass through this point we have this straight line it's actually a straight line so that becomes what a fixed kind of curve you can clearly see so that's what the assumption is saying that that total variable cost varies or changes and you can see clearly when we're illustrating on this curve but total variable cost per unit is what is constant or fixed and doesn't change as and when output changes per unit variable cost remains what the same as what 20 and this is what actually the assumption is actually what's telling us so that is what we need to understand when it comes to what break even analysis in relation to total variable cost changes but total variable cost per unit what remains what the same or it doesn't change all right and we, we illustrate that with also in terms of numbers and in terms of graph you can clearly see so that is also another example that we need to understand and we also have the other brother or the opposite of this assumption he also says that our total face cost is fixed total face cost is fixed but per unit per unit face cost varies per unit face cost varies or changes the input face cost varies or what changes we can also uh, actually illustrate this using numbers and also also using what the graph let's say we have our level of activity as l we also have our total face cost our total face cost and our total face cost per unit i use the l to present the level of activity and then in that line so let's use the same level of activity we have what 100 200 300 400 and let's say our first cost let's say thousand by the nature of face cost we define face cost as what cost that remains the same it doesn't change with the level of auto if we produce 100 we're still going to pay a face cost of what thousand if you produce 200 you're going to pay, pay a face cost of what thousand so it doesn't change with the level of output or what so so we have thousand here we also have thousand here and we also have thousand here but let's see in terms of their total face cost per unit right and how do you do that you take that total face cost and then divide by what the level of output or the level of activity for that particular what period so we take thousand divided by what hundred what are we getting you should be able to get 10. but when you take thousand divided by 200 you are getting what five you can confirm that for me and also take 300 divided by thousand divided by 300 we are getting what 3.33 and we take what thousand divided by what 400 we are getting what 
That's 2.50. Let's say 0 0.00. So you can clearly see from these figures that as and when output increases, our total face cost per unit will reduces. You can clearly see that as and when our output increases, right? As and when our output increases, our total variable cost per unit also what decreases. So I use here to represent increase, and I use here to represent what a decrease. So there is also a decrease. So here there is an increase. There is an increase in output, but with respect to total first cost per unit, there is also what a decrease. A decrease, right? A decrease in what output. So that should tell the organization that as and when they produce more output and generate more sales, they can reduce their total first cost per unit or their first cost per unit can be what reduce and they can cover what more of what their expenses to make more what profit at the break even point or beyond the break even point. And beyond that, we'll get to understand what we call a margin of safety, right? Is the level of sales beyond the break even point that organization will make a profit, but at the break even point, Neither we neither make a profit or neither make a loss, and at that point, our total revenue is equal to our total cost. That is just by the way. So you can clearly see that first cost, irrespective of the level of output, first cost remain the same. But the total first cost per unit to keeps on what changing, and here there is a decrease in the change. There is a decrease in the change. This is what we need to understand when it comes to what break-even analysis. Right, so this is also the third assumption that we also need to know when it comes to you can illustrate this on actually using graph, and you can clearly see that first cost will give you what a straight line like the total variable cost per unit, and then the total first cost per unit will also give you what a, a curve like this, like this curve that you can see clearly here. Yeah? That's an upward word curve. So it can be a typical MCQ or an objective question. Explain why. Total face cost have the same nature in terms of graph, right, as that of the total variable cost. And that of the total variable cost per unit also having the same nature of what graphical representation as the total face cost. You can use the graphical representation actually to explain. And from there, you can clearly see that total face cost have the same nature of graphical representation as that of for the total variable cost per unit. But the total variable cost also have the same graphical representation as the total face cost per unit. This is what we need to understand when it comes to what break even analysis and its assumption, right? And then also, let's add two more assumptions and then we move on to talk about the graphical representation of break even analysis. And then as well, we define in some formulas based on the graphical representation. Ivy, the assumption also actually works or actually related to what a single product what we are discussing is what just a single product we are making decision on a single word product we are making decision on a single word product so the break analysis that we are actually discussing is a decision on the production of what a single word product or a product constant mix or a product mix that has a constant word activity right so that's why we also need to understand as a, another assumption. V is also that in terms of production and sale, they are the same. What do I mean by it being the same in terms of production and sale? We are saying that under break-even analysis, whatever we produce, whatever we produce, production. So let's say production, production is equal to what? Sales. So whatever we produce, we sell all of them out. That is the assumption that whatever we produce, we sell them out. And at any cost that we incur for production, will also be the same thing as the sales that we generate at the end of the day. That is what break-even analysis is all about. And that's what we need to understand. And then also in break-even analysis, the unit selling price is constant, right? As and when output changes, the unit selling price remains what the same. The unit selling price remains the same, but as and when output changes, the same unit selling price that we actually want for price the product. So as and when output changes, the unit selling price remains the same. That was also another assumption that we need to know when it comes to break-even analysis. So generally, that is what we need to understand when it comes to what break-even analysis. We have said that break-even analysis has to do with 
the analysis that have or that establishes what relationship between our cost, revenue, and output. And at the point of break even, profit is equal to zero, loss is equal to zero, and our total revenue is equal to what our total cost. So that is what we need to understand in that line. So let's take note of that. So now we have gotten to understand what break even analysis is and how it assumption actually explains how it works. Then let's move on to how we actually represent uh, these sections on a graphical form. On a graphical form, graphical form. So we call that as what a traditional break-even what graph. So let's look at a traditional, a traditional break-even analysis graph. Graph. So let's take this page to look at that in that line. So let me bring in here a bit here so that, sorry. I wish it could, okay, no problem. I don't want to come. Okay, let me bring it here. Let me paste here, good. So traditional break-even graph. Let's see how we can illustrate this graphically. And explain certain word terms as we move along in that line. Now, let's say I have my X and Y curve. Let me bring it on top here. Oh, come on. So, on the vertical axis, I have my cost. That's total cost or revenue or revenue or total cost or revenue, total curve or revenue or curve. And then on the horizontal line, I have my, my output. My output, I have my output. This is what we need to understand in that line. Now, now I want to represent this graphically. We said break with analysis establishes what relationship between our cost, revenue, and what output, right? I hope we can see clearly here. Now, we said that total cost to is also can also be segregated into what fixed component plus what a variable component. So we want to illustrate how we can get a fixed cost on the break-even word graph and how we also can get a word a variable cost on that line. But one thing that we need to note here is that when it comes to traditional break-even analysis graph, we don't make illustration of what variable cost curve. We don't make illustration of what variable cost curve. That's what we need to understand. Okay, so we're going to illustrate only the first cost. And then also, we're also going to illustrate what the total revenue curve, right? And as well, also illustrate, I think the first cost and the revenue in that line. But as we move along, others will come in for us to appreciate in that line. So we first of all, look at what total face cost. How does total face cost actually behave graphically? So we say total face cost is fixed. It doesn't change with the level of output or our sale. So on the break-even graph, you see, let's say here is uh, zero point of origin that line. This is how break-even analysis actually comes in, in terms of face cost. Face cost is a cost, okay, that is what perpendicular to the total cost or revenue word curve. Right, so we'll always form an angle of what 90 degrees at the total cost or revenue word curve. So this is how it's going to be. It's going to be a straight line like this. So at the same time, you see a straight line that makes an angle of 90 degrees, it becomes what your total what face cost or your face cost curve. Your face cost curve. Okay, so there's our face cost curve. So once we're able to get our face cost, we also want also want to illustrate what. A total word cost. So this is how face cost is actually behaved on graphically. It is straight. It is parallel towards the output line or curve, right? So when it also comes to the total cost to you, which is said is a combination of what face cost plus variable cost. A total cost also is a curve or a line that start at the point where the face cost is perpendicular to the total cost or revenue word curve. So this way we're also going to get our total cost curve or line going to be here perpendicular so we start from here so this is going to be more of what let me draw it or uh -huh. 
for now. I want to touch here. This problem is going to be our total what? Our total cost. Our total cost curve or line. It starts at a point where the total fixed cost is perpendicular to total cost or revenue curve, right? Or which is parallel to the that of what the output curve or line. Is that okay? Right. So this is also our total cost curve. This is also our total cost curve. And total revenue curve also start from at the point of what origin, at the point of origin where the total cost curve or total revenue actually meet with that of the output curve. So this point is at the point where we have what our revenue what line or curve starting from. So this is what is going to happen. Let me use a different one. So we have this is going to be our total revenue. Let's say something like this, or let me draw it to all. Okay, let's say something like this. Total what? Revenue. Now, what is happening here? Now, what is happening here? We have our total face cost, we have our total cost, and we have our total revenue. You really can clearly see here that at this point, the total revenue line is intersecting or meeting the total cost line. And what is happening here? And at a point where total revenue meets or crosses the total cost, is at this point that we establish what we call our break even point. So we have our break even point. We have our BEP being the break even point, being the break even point. So it's at this point where we neither make a profit or we neither make what? A loss, right? So this is our break even point. And when I trace from this break even point, right? Down to meet that of the output line, we have what we call our break even point in terms of what unit. So this is going to be our break even point in unit. Okay, this is going to be our break even point in unit. And we also trace it from here to meet that of the total cost or revenue line. We get our break even point. In terms of what value, so break even point. In terms of what value or in monetary terms, value or cost, it can be a cost value. Okay, so let's put it in this way: just value. Just take it like that. Value in monetary terms, whether it's a cost or say that one, we are not interested. All all that we need to understand is in terms of value, having what a monetary what value. So. This is a point where we neither make a profit or a loss. So it's at this point, at this output level, we will neither make a profit or a loss. So this becomes our break-even point in terms of what units, and this goes our break-even point in terms of what value. So let's take note of that. So once we, we know where our break-even point is, then we can take the analysis a bit further. Now. Beyond the break even point, what is happening here? Beyond the break even point, like this point, beyond this point, right? Beyond this point, or beyond this uh, point here, or beyond this line, what is happening here? So, meaning that any unit that we produce that is above this line, right? Or above this point as a break even point, will make what? A profit. Before that, we can clearly see an angle forming here and there because of this or well, two lines meeting we call this as what an angle of what incidence and we call this area we call this area let me use black here we call this area to be the profit what area to be what the profit area we call this area to be profit area below the break even point we have what a lost area we have a lost area we have a lost area, right? This is what we need to understand. So beyond the break-even point, we are making a profit. Below it, we are making what? A loss. And let's get back to what we were discussing before we chip in the profits area and then the lost area. Now, this is what is happening. Beyond the break-even point in terms of units, there is a level of output or so that we are actually what, producing. So beyond the break-even point, we are getting what? Other outputs, and we call that as what the margin of safety. 
the margin of safety. Safety. The margin of safety. So we have margin of safety in terms of what unit and margin of safety in terms of what value. So this is going to be our margin of what safety in terms of what value. So most of we call it as what MOX in terms of value. And we have MOX in terms of what unit. In terms of what unit. Right? So this is what we need to know. So margin of safety is the level of sale in terms of value or unit. Please, I'm coming. So let's continue. So as I was saying, margin of safety is the level of sale or unit beyond the break-even point where the organization will make what a profit. So the level of sale, right, beyond the break-even point where we can make a profit is called the margin of safety. You can clearly see that beyond this level, any unit we produce here, that will meet this line or this area we are making what a profit and can clearly see from here the lines i'm producing so any unit we produce on this output curve or line that meet this area will make what a profit but below here we are making what losses right so that's why we call it margin of safety it is at the point where we can what make what a profit it is the point beyond the break even point where we can make what profit. So it becomes what the margin of what safety. So we have margin of safety in terms of what unit and in terms of what value. Okay, so this is what we need to understand when it comes to what margin of safety in terms of unit and in terms of what their value. So let's take note of that. So now we know what a break even point is, we know what a break even point in terms of unit is. In terms of value, we know margin of safety in terms of units. We know margin of safety in terms of value. We also know the profit area. We also know the loss area, right? So this is all about the break-even. And I also know the care for total cost or total revenue care. And we also know what the output. And this is what we need to understand when it comes to what break-even analysis graph. And as I said, on traditional break-even analysis graph, we don't illustrate what a variable cost curve or a line. We only illustrate what a total revenue curve. We start from the origin, right? And also illustrate a total cost curve. We start from the point where the first cost is actually making a perpendicular line to that of the total cost or revenue word curve. And also illustrate what a total first cost curve. So out of this graph, we can deduce some kind of what mathematical formulas to, to help us to calculate the break-even point in terms of unit in terms of value, margin of savings of units, margin of in terms of even value, and even look at other issues like target profit in terms of unit and in terms of their value, right? Because there's a certain point where the business will target that this is the profit you want to make. And we ask ourselves, at what point can we actually produce to achieve that target? So that's going to be something that is above the break-even point in terms of units. That we can target that to make a profit but at the break-even point you can't make a profit you can't make a loss and everything is what zero so we're going to discuss those issues a very few minutes but i want to take in some five minutes question if you have any question to that what we have learned so far you can bring it on board before we look at the formulas that will help us to calculate break-even point in terms of units in terms of value and other issues we have discussed here so let's see if you have any question let me see before i continue in that line before i continue by looking at the formulas in that line any question
So if there are no questions, then let's look at the formulas that we can actually use to calculate these uh, break-even points and eight uh, other features that we have learned right now here. So in there, we start by looking at formulas and our break-even analysis formulas. Formulas and a BEP. So based on the graph presentation that we just learned right now, we can say that, and we also know that one of the assumptions that break-even analysis here is that at a point where our total cost meet the total what revenue meaning that we neither make a profit we neither make a loss and we break what even we break even so that would mean that we can establish this equation that our total revenue should be equal to our total what cost now stay with me carefully here when it comes to total revenue it's called total cost we're going to deduce some formulas out of this word equation now what is happening here we said total revenue can be actually split into two forms by saying that and let's say in this uh deduction let's make x as our output right we're going to use s as our output so i will say that x being the output that we are producing multiplying what xp being the selling price per unit will fetch as our total revenue and i hope you remember that we said total revenue is called what the total output that we produce multiplying what the selling price multiplying the selling price per unit and we also said that our total cost should also be a combination of what total variable cost plus total what first cost and i hope you remember that okay so if that is the case that is fine now we can clearly see that we have our x being the output that we are producing and remember we said that one of the assumptions on a break-even analysis here is that our total output or our total production should be called towards our total sales. So meaning that whatever we sell should be the same thing as whatever we produce. Is that okay? And we always get our production or our output from the total variable cost, right? So that will primarily mean that if we don't produce, our total variable cost is what is zero because we said total variable cost is a cost that will change with the level of output or so. So if we don't produce, then total variable cost is zero, but first cost will remain the same. If you produce two, then we get a different what, total variable cost in that line. So that means that we can also expand the total variable cost to mean that it also should be equal to the output multiplying what the variable cost per unit. And I will use what just VP to represent what the variable cost per unit. All right, and when we multiply the output by the variable cost per unit, we are getting our total variable cost plus our face cost. That becomes the total face cost in that line. Now, what is happening here? We have output, output here, right? The two. We can do something about it. We can group them on one side. So this is what we can do. We can say that we have what our x multiplying selling price minus here is possible becomes what minus here. We also have our x multiplying what our variable cost and that should be equal to what our first cost now what is happening here we can actually factorize s out being the output that we are producing or being the unit that we are producing and this, let's see what will happen so when i factor out x this is what i'm getting i have xp minus what vp because I want to put in the xp and vp in bracket so if you want to expand when you expand x by x we are getting xp here when you expand x by vp you are getting what minus x vp being a variable cost per unit and that should be equal to what our first cost now i want to make what x a subject so i will divide both sides by what xp minus vp divide both sides by xp minus vp and what are we getting we have x to be equal to what our first cost divided by xp minus vp and you know that xp is a selling price per unit and then the variable cost also the variable the vp is also a variable cost per what unit and this is what we will get as what our break even point in unit right and that should be equal to the first cost over the selling price per unit minus the variable cost per unit this is why you most of the time see in other tests right that break even point is equal to the first cost over selling price minus the variable cost this is how actually it was actually derived 
So when you add five breaking beam points in terms of what unit, it should be first cost divided by the selling price minus the variable cost or in pair unit. Let me do that. Or in pair what unit? Or in pair unit. Right. So now once we now so once we know how to compute for a break even point in terms of what unit being the face cost over selling price minus variable cost, then we can also calculate in terms of value. So if we want to know break even point in terms of value, break even point in terms of what value, all that you need to do is to say that it should be your face cost divided by the selling price minus the variable cost or in per unit. Okay. And then multiply all, and then multiply all by what? The selling price per unit. And then multiply all by the selling price per unit. This is what you must do. So always, if you're able to compute your break-even point in unit right, you can even straight away say that your break-even point in value should be equal to your BEP in terms of unit, which is X, and then multiply by the selling price per unit without even quoting the formula and then something the figures what again. So once you're able to get the break even point in terms of units, okay? Once you get it right, just multiply that by what? The selling price per unit and you get what your break even point in terms of what? Value. Very simple. So always let's take note of that. So always it is the best is for your best interest to compute the break even point in terms of what you need to write. So once you get the unit, just multiply it straight by the selling price per unit and you are good to what go. So that is the break even point in terms of unit and in terms of what value. So let's take note of that. Sorry. Then also, we can also as well discuss our margin of safety that we actually talk about on the graph, right? So we said the margin of safety is the level of sales in terms of units beyond the break even point that we are making what a profit. And in terms of value two, it's going to be beyond the break even point in terms of value where we we'll make what? Where we we'll make a sale. So in simple terms, we we'll define margin of safety. So that becomes our formula one. Formula one, I and I, I. Now formula two, I. We have margin of safety. So one that we call it as MOX in terms of what unit. It should be equal to the difference between the level of sales. So here, sales in unit, right? And when that's in all the case, you'll be given the sales in unit in that line for you to actually use the compute for your margin of safety. So we have sales in unit minus the break even point in unit. So you always compare sales in units to that of the break-even point. By comparison, I mean that you subtract the break-even point in units from the sales in units. Or most of the time, you see that's what? Volume of what? Sales. But I don't see sales in units, you also see what? Volume of sales. Just compare the two and you get your margin of safety in terms of units. Likewise, if you're also able to compute your margin of safety in terms of units right to, you can clearly say that, therefore, your margin of safety in terms of value should also should be equal to what? In simple terms, should be equal to the sales in units, right? Minus the break even point in units, all multiplying. So we have all multiplying, all multiplying, all multiplying or the selling price per unit. And as I was saying, if you're able to compute your margin of safety in terms of units right, you can straight away say that your margin of safety in terms of value should be equal to your margin of safety in terms of unit, since you're able to compute it right, and then multiply by what the selling price per unit. Simple. And you are good to go. But if you want to go by the whole formula, then margin of safety in terms of value should be equal to sales in units compared to that of the break-even point unit, or multiplying what? The selling price per unit. But once you're able to compute your margin of safety in terms of units right, just multiply it straight away by what? The selling price per unit, and you then get what? Your margin of safety in terms of value. So let's be guided about margin of safety in that line. So now that is our formula two. 
I and II. So let's take note of that. Let's go to our formula three. We'll use a question to actually explain or clarify this formula that we are deriving in that line. We also talk about the issue about target what? Profit, target profit, target profit. There are situations where the organization might have a target that they want to achieve. So by target profit, it is actually the goal or decision that the organization has made that at this certain level, we can make what? This profit. So target profit is a profit that organization has planned to achieve for a particular what? Period, right? That is becomes what the target what? Profit. So in terms of target profit, you also have target profit in terms of sale and in terms of what? I mean, in terms of value and in terms of what? Unit. And as I said, in terms of the value, too, you can also see as in terms of sale. So if you don't see value, you see sale. They are the same, right? And target profit to also have in terms of value and in terms of what unit, in terms of value, in terms of unit or sale or value and in terms of unit. So in that line too, this is how target profits also operate, right? So at this certain level, beyond the break-even point in terms of unit, we can make what certain what profit, right? So when we talk about target profit in terms of unit, it is also very simple. The only thing that makes a difference is what we call the target profit. So if you remember the break-even point in terms of unit here, which is this formula that you can see here, okay, all that I want to do is to add a target profit to the first cost at the numerator here and then divide by the selling price my variable cost or in per unit and you get what your target profit in terms of unit. It, is that simple? Is that simple? So let's take note of that. So target profit in terms of units should be equal to the first cost plus the target profit, okay? And then divide or divided by the selling price minus the variable cost or in per unit, please. So take note of that, that all are in both per unit or are in per unit. And as well, if you're also able to compute your target profit in terms of units, right? You can straight away use Target profit in terms of unit multiplying what the selling price per unit, and that will fetch your target profit in terms of sales or in terms of what value, in terms of sales or in terms of value. This is what we need to understand when it comes to this break even. Actually, the formulas are that simple. So once you understand one, you're able to build up on the other, right? So we have target profit in terms of what sale or in terms of value. And in that line, we're also going to go by the long formula as well. That's fine. You have your first cost plus your target profit divided by the selling price minus the variable cost or in per unit. Okay. And then multiply all this thing by the selling price per unit. That will fetch you your target profit in terms of units, right? But if you want to use a simple formula or that should be equal to once you're able to compute your target profit in terms of units, right? Okay. You then multiply that by the selling price per unit and you get your target profit in terms of units. Very simple, very, very simple. So let's take note of that. So that becomes our target profit in terms of units and in terms of what value. So let's be guided about that. And through our discussion too, we have been talking about profit loss in that line. Now, break even point or break even actually, as we said, is the level of sale or output for which the organization will engage in order to actually cover a cost. So is a level of sale or output that organization want to achieve in order to cover its cost. Its cost can be what? A face cost. For example, face cost can be one of the costs that organization want to what, cover or meet in that line. So in terms of what? Deducing actually, if you want to deduce, let's like, say, a profit, right for the organization after the break even point that's what you can do we know that we have our total revenue representing the sale right so if i have my sales okay compare that to that of what my variable cost now what is happening here at any time we compare our sales to that of our variable cost be the total sales compared to total variable cost or be the sales compared to the variable cost or in per unit, we get what we call a contribution. A contribution. And what is contribution? So contribution is actually a difference between the sales minus the variable cost. And as I said, it can be 
sales so selling price per unit minus the variable cost per that will fetch you the contribution per unit or it can be the total sales minus the total variable cost. that will also fetch you the total contribution so contribution we use contribution to represent the profit that we we'll use to say when it comes to uh businesses so and i break we use the word what contribution we use the word contribution so when we have our sales compared to that of variable cost we get what contribution we get contribution okay so once you're able to get a contribution right is at this point that once we able to, once we get our contribution and then here lies the case our first cost will come in because we said first cost is the cost that wouldn't change with respect to the level of outputs or sales so if you want to break even then at this point we should be able to cover our cost so that we neither make a profit or we neither make a loss so once we are getting our contribution is this contribution we are going to use to actually cover our first cost right and therefore at break even points we will say that our contribution should be equal to our first cost our contribution should be equal to our first cost which represent the profit within this analysis right so once our contribution is equal to our first cost then our profit or our loss will also be equal to what zero we neither get a profit we neither get a loss because i don't really our contribution is going to use to cover our first cost and everything we amounted to what zero right that's why we said our total revenue should be equal to our total what cost and in that line total cost can also be defined as what our total first cost plus total what variable cost so once we are getting our contribution, the contribution we are going to use to cover our first cost, and I don't know we will get what profit to be zero, our loss to be zero, and we are break what even. Okay, so meaning that once we compare sales to variable cost, we get a contribution, and then we use the contribution to cover our first cost, and we get our profit to be called to what zero, our loss to be called to zero, and we neither make a profit or a loss, and we break what even. So we also define contribution being our third formula being our third formula or formula three as contribution is equal to what our sales minus the variable cost contribution is equal to sales minus the variable cost here i was defining contribution from the perspective of total sales minus the total what variable cost that will fetch in my total what contribution let's get in that line maybe we also want to define contribution from so that becomes the formula three i if we also want to define contribution from per unit, then we say that contribution contribution per unit should be equal to the selling price per unit minus the variable cost per unit. This is what we have been using throughout when it comes to uh, that of what the break-even formula, the denominator, this one. So at the same time, you have selling price minus variable cost all in per unit, then we are getting our contribution per unit. But total contribution is equal to that of what our total sales minus total variable cost where we get our total what contribution so let's take note or be guided about this in that line going forward so let's take note of that and then as well we can also discuss lastly what we call our cx ratio contribution to sales what ratio we want to find the i want to compare how much our contribution we generate from the sales how much contribution you're able to get from the sales that we generate as a business we want to find the ratio or want to compare the two so that going forward if you are able to make a lot of sales that that will mean that probably we'll get what more contribution if you make less so that will mean that we'll get what less what contribution so that is the idea we want to put across you want to want to know contribution to what sales ratio. so most of the time we call it cs ratio we want to know the, the 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 relationship that exists between contribution to sales what uh kind of right so if you're able to make more sales the assumption here is that we'll get more contribution you're able to make less contribution to you're able to make less sales then you get less contribution but let's not forget that that's also dependent on the variable cost because variable cost will changes as and when output changes and we said that in breaking analysis whatever we produce she will be equal to whatever we will sell at the end of the day. That's what also we need to understand. So we have a lot of factors that are coming in here. So CS ratio, we want to know the comparison between our contribution to our sales so that we can guide us 
when it comes to production, when it comes to making business decisions in regards to production in that line. So CS ratio should be equal to what? The contribution per unit divided by the selling price per unit or multiplying what? 100 or multiplying 100. So most of the time we convert to what? A percentage. So this is kind of the CS ratio in terms of what? Or in per unit. Maybe we want CS ratio in terms of total, in terms of their total, then we have total contribution divided by total sales or multiplying 100. And you get, you get the same percentage in that line. We also want to use their per unit too. It is contribution per unit divided by what? Sales selling price and then multiplied by what? 100. So contribution per unit too. Contribution per unit, right? Is equal to the total contribution divided by what? The total units under consideration. Total units under consideration. That will fetch your contribution per unit in that line. So this is also another formula that we need to understand when it comes to break-even analysis. And this is all about break-even analysis. When we are talking about what a single product analysis, we will use this to actually analyze and to make decisions, to know how much we can produce an organization, to know our costs that we will care, to know our revenue we generate, and at what point are we making a profit, and at what point are we making a losses, and at what point that we neither make a profit or we neither make a loss. And at that point, our profit or loss is equal to zero, and contributions are equal to what our face costs. And I hope actually you have learned a lot from this line. So if you have any question, you can drop it because we're going to have solve one example question on this and then we'll take it from there and then end the discussion for today. So let's take one example from here and let's see how far we can go in that line. So let's take an example one from my book here. I wish you have this book. It's a textbook that I used. But let's see. Let's take example exercise and let's see how far we can deal with in that line. So it goes like um, come in. And then also, there are also issues where our analysis can change. An issue where if there is a change in a variable cost, as a change in a fixed cost, how does that will affect our break-even point? And how will we explain that in relation to our business decision? So let's take this example. Let's say, so let's say example. Just a classical example, illustration to uh, explain the concept. So illustration. So we have illustration one. So we have AA Limited. AA Limited produce 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 and sold produce and sold produce and sold produce and sold. Let's say. Produce and sold, uh, let's say biscuits. Let's say biscuits, right? Eight variable cost, eight variable cost per unit was, eight variable cost per unit was $10. And that of the selling price, the selling price, please don't mind the handwriting, was $20. Sales volume, sales volume for the period, sales volume for the period was Sales volume for the period was 5,000. 5,000 units of biscuits. 5,000 units of biscuits. Okay. So based on this information, we are asked to calculate. Calculate I. Break even point in terms of units and value. I. I. 
margin of safety in terms of units and value. I, I, I. I, 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 our contribution to sales word ratio. Contribution to sales ratio, IV. Our target profit, our target profit in terms of units, if AA limited planned, planned, planned profit was planned profit was like say thirty thousand. Okay, that is the requirement. Note and B our first cost. Our first cost, first cost was, first cost was $100,000. For example, $100,000. So this is the question you have been given to actually use to. So you have AA Limited produce and sold biscuits. That was in, in their past activity. If variable cost per unit was what, $10 and that of the selling price per unit was what, $20. Sales volume for the period was what five thousand units. So we are asked to calculate break-even point terms of units and in value, margin of terms of units and in value, then CS ratio as co contribution sales ratio. Then we have what target profit if AA limited plan profit was what thirty thousand, and we are also asked to know that first cost was what hundred thousand. Now this is what we need to understand before we even solve this question. To most of the times. I'm coming. So let's continue. So before we solve this question too, there are times where the examiner can actually put you on a lot of thinking. What is happening here? Let's say you'll be given, let's say, a question like this, and they will ask you. They will tell you that, let's say, the sales volume for the period was, let's say, 5,000. Let's say, per annum. All right? They will say that sales volume was per annum. Or probably they will say that first cost was, let's say, 100,000 per annum. That's for the year. For a year. But the question will come and or the examiner will come and ask you, calculate break-even point in terms of units and value, let's say monthly. Right? Monthly. Or let's say you'll be given the monthly values and you ask you to calculate, let's say, break-even point in terms of units and value per annum. How do you also do that? So at any time where you have been given an information like this, where the examiner is asking you that the first cost per unit, the first cost for the period was less than 100,000 per annum. But you're asked to calculate break-even point for the unit in terms of monthly. Then this is what you must do. Once you calculate what the break-even point in terms of unit for the annum, all that you need to do is to divide it by what 12 so that you get what monthly break-even point in terms of units. If it is also or if also was also given in monthly and we're asked to calculate in a yearly basis, this all that you need to do is that after calculating that, you must multiply that by what 12 so that you get a yearly basis word break even point in terms of units or in terms of value, whether in terms of also margin of safety in unity in value or other uh formulas that we have actually were deduced in some few minutes ago. So this is also what we also need to understand. So if we were asked to let's say calculate our break even point in terms of monthly monthly uh values. In terms of units, in terms of units, let's say monthly, right? Where we know that all the information was given in a yearly basis. That should be what our first cost after getting our break-even point. Let's say, assuming that let's say we get our breaking point of units to be let's say uh three thousand. This is for the whole year. So for us to get monthly, we divide by what twelve so that we get monthly break-even point in terms of units this is what i want you to understand or we want us to understand going forward because the examiner can also put you at that spot for you to think whether how to compute for what monthly basis or yearly basis or even weekly basis 
right? Or it can be any period at all. Always note the information that will be given in the question and know how to actually treat them, whether weekly, monthly, yearly, whatever it comes. So let's also be guided about this smart uh, tip because whether you like it or yes, the examiner will bring in those issues for you to actually uh, put you on a spot for you to think to get those uh, figures for him or her. So let's take note of that. So let's let's go. Let's get back to our question that we have been given. So we are asked to calculate break-even point in terms of units and in terms of value. And I'm expecting you to also to do the calculations so that we we'll get it in that line. So here we have our solution here. We have AA Limited. AA Limited. Sorry. So our break-even point in terms of units should be equal to our first cost divided by selling price minus the variable cost or in per unit right but here the examiner actually didn't specify whether we are asked to calculate in terms of monthly or unit so we just go by the information that was being what that has been actually what been given right so we know that our first cost was what Th thousand ten thousand dollars right so divided by hundred thousand dollars sorry hundred thousand dollars divided by the selling price what was our selling price the selling price was what 20 so we have what 20 dollars remember this in per unit right minus what well, what was our variable cost per unit and that one was what uh 10 so we have 10 being our variable cost per unit all right so all are in per unit so here with the upper calculator we should be able to get a value so what are we getting so we have what hundred thousand divided by what 10 divided by 10 so you see the cities will cancel the cities right one zero can cancel one zero so what are we left with what are we left with so we are getting what what will be our break even point in terms of unit so that's going to be ten thousand, right so that should mean that we should adjust our sales volume we should adjust our sales volume so let's say our sales volume should be fifty thousand. hope you get that difference because i created this question so i need to know how it should be so 50,000 units 50,000 units so that becomes our break even point in terms of what units so once you would get breaking point in terms of units 10,000 then we can say that our break even point in terms of value i won't even quote this formula again all that i would do is to pick my break even point in units okay and then multiply that by what the selling price and then multiply that by the selling price per what per unit and that is all i'm done so multiply by selling price per what per unit okay so what are we getting what were we getting as break even point in terms of unit so we here should be in unit so the city shouldn't be there the city shouldn't be there it should be in units so ten thousand units right so we have ten thousand units of biscuit multiply the selling price of for 20 so 20000 so what are we getting as what in terms of value we are getting what we are getting what we are getting i think 200000 right we are getting 200000 we are getting 200000 and i hope that is correct and i hope that is correct we are getting 200000 so that becomes our break even point in terms of what value right and then we also have our margin of safety. So that's going to be II. So MOX in terms of unit, we said that should be the comparison of for the sales in unit, right? Minus our break even point in unit. Okay. So what are we getting as our sales in unit? Our sales in unit was what? So let's see our sales. It was what fifty thousand here, fifty thousand, right? So we'll just pick that and bring it here. Fifty thousand. Compare that to our break-even point in unit, and that was what ten thousand. You can see clearly here ten thousand. So we have ten thousand here. We have ten thousand here. So what are we getting as our margin of safety? We are getting what forty thousand. We are getting 40,000 units. You must bring the units. It's very important. Units of biscuits. 
right? If it's also in value to you, add what the currency in that line. So that is our margin in terms of what units. For us to get in terms of what value, once you're able to calculate your margin of safety in terms of units, right? You say that value or sales should be equal to your MOX in units. Okay, your MOX in units. Multiply that by what the selling price per what unit. Multiply that by the selling price per unit. So what are we getting? So we have what forty thousand. Multiplying what selling price of what twenty thousand twenty twenty dollars or twenty dollars. And what are we getting? I know twenty. I know two by four. I'm getting eight, right? So that should fetch me eight. Is it eight hundred? Yeah. I think eight hundred thousand. So eight hundred thousand dollars should be my margin of safety in terms of what value should be my margin of safety in terms of what. Yeah, should be my margin of safety in terms of what value. So let's take note of that. Please be checking the calculations for me so that we know that we are getting everything right in that line. And what next? What we ask you also ask to calculate what CS ratio. So that is contribution to sales ratio, right? So our CS ratio should be equal to cx multiplying what 100 right how do you get our contribution we can get our contribution by saying that in terms of per unit we have what our selling price minus our variable cost all divided by the selling price okay and then multiply all by what 100 right that's in terms of per unit so we have our selling price to be what 20 variable cost was what 10 selling price is 20 multiply that by what 100 percent or 100 it should be 100 not 100 percent so what are we getting as percentage so we have here to be what 10 divided by 20 multiplying what 100 so 20 can go to 100 what five right yeah so i'm getting what 50 percent so mean that in terms of what percentage if you're able to add additional sale of 50 percent right right we can get what a contribution of what say 50 percent in addition that should be the explanation behind right so let's take note so that is what in terms of it, we are getting on 50 percent in that line so let's take note of that so that's good that that is what our I, I i so last one iv or not the last one let's see yeah target profit in terms of what unit if aa plan profit was what let's say thirty thousand dollars so what will be our target profit? So we said that our target profit in terms of units should be equal to should be equal to our first cost. Oh, remember the formula plus the target profit divide all by the selling price minus the variable cost or in per unit. Since you are finding target profit in terms of units, this is how it's going to be, right? If we're to be value to you, multiply. The target profit in terms of units by selling price per unit we get the value so what are we getting we know our first cost to be what hundred thousand dollars come in We know our first cost to be what 100,000, and we know our target profit to be what 30,000, right? Divide all by the contribution for which we know it should be the selling price of 20 minus what the variable cost of 10 or in per unit. So, what are we getting? So, I don't know, we are getting what 130,000 divided by what 10. Is that so? Yeah, so here it should be ten dollars, right? So Zero can cancel this. Zero. We are left with what? Thirteen thousand. So thirteen thousand units of what? Biscuits. So that should inform you that at the production level of thirteen thousand, we can make a target profit of what? Thirty thousand dollars. That is the interpretation behind that. At the production level of what? Thirteen thousand units, we can achieve. A target profit of what thirty thousand, and this is what we need to understand when it comes to break even. And as I said, the issue about the periodicity in relation to this break even that the examiner, the examiner, sorry, the examiner can actually 
give you a yearly information, ask you to compute for monthly or compute for what weekly or compute for what fortly or I mean daily, even daily. They can even ask you. You must know how to do their conversion. If you are giving yearly information and ask to compute for what monthly basis, then once you're able to get that uh, formula answer, if it is a month, then divide by 12. Okay. So that is what we need to uh, understand in that line. If also was given a monthly basis, you ask to compute this yearly, then after that, you multiply by what? 12. So that you get it in that line. So let's take note of that. Let's take note of that in that line too. Because whether you like it or yes, there's someone who will put you at that spot and will test your knowledge in that line. Any question? That is all about break even analysis. If you have any question, you can bring it on board for a single product analysis. For a single product analysis. So if you have any question, you can bring it on board so that we'll actually uh explain it further for you to uh, understand in that line. Right. So that is all about break even analysis. Please, if you haven't liked the video, do all to like the video. If you haven't subscribed to subscribe to the channel so that always you can visit the channel to watch more content on our live discussion like this. So if you have any question, please let me know before we'll bring the discussion to an end. Any, any question? Any, any question? Any, any question? If you have any question, you can drop in the comment section. So if you don't have any questions asked, then I'm grateful to have you here. Always coming online to actually watch content. And I'm always grateful to always have you here. So please continue to always uh, be watching our content and then you always feel the impact of the change between adding up this channel to your other personal studies and you see the change during your examination after even the examination deadline. So thank you so much for joining us today on this channel. So I'll see you next session where we discuss other issues. That's probably next week where we we'll solve even more questions on breaking analysis for you to appreciate the concept better and then to get yourself actually positioned for the exams or any future examination that you may engage on. So I will see you in the next section. Bye-bye. You are welcome back to Labby Premium Concept. On this channel, we share educational content ranging from mathematics to accounting. Welcome back to Labby Premium Concept. On this channel, we share educational content ranging from mathematics to accounting.